Hi, my name is Wes Overton, and today we're going to talk about a new standard for the Alabama Algebra 1 with Probability course. And this standard is standard number three, that students will define the imaginary number i such that i squared equals negative one. So this is the only place in the Algebra 1 where we see the imaginary number. Students will get a more in-depth view and a deeper dive into complex numbers in Algebra 2. So we have a couple of lessons that come from the Illustrated Mathematics High School curriculum. And the first lesson starts out with a real good example, I think, to help students see why we have the need for imaginary numbers. So it talks about if we had the equation 8 plus x equals 5, you know, previously, it kind of takes them back to when they were in seventh grade, you know, they only had the positive numbers. Well, we need to add an integer so we can represent a solution to that equation. So we could have negative 3 as a solution to this equation. We have the full real number line right here. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit in the lesson. So a couple things is they're showing how to represent numbers on a number line. So if we need to start at zero and show an arrow to represent the number three, I would simply go right there. If I needed to represent the number five, I would start at zero and go five units to the left. And that arrow could represent the number five. Now, to represent the solution to negative one, that is not on the real number line, so I just need to go up one to represent the square root of negative one. So if I have three times the square root of negative one, I need to go one, two, three, and that could be my representation of three times the square root of negative one. At this point, we still have not introduced the letter i yet, or the number i yet. So the opposite, so if this one goes up, the opposite must go down, and then we could have negative 5 times the square root of negative 1. So we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that arrow could represent negative 5 times the square root of negative 1. So what we're doing, we're showing that you know we need another number line to represent solutions to this equation, and that is building the imaginary number line or the complex number system. And then in the next lesson, they're going to look at just some situations where we have this imaginary number line along with the real number line, and we want to represent solutions to these equations. So I have a squared equals positive 16. So a could be 4, or a could be negative 4. That could be a solution b squared equals negative 9. So one thing they realize is the square root symbol is just reserved for positive numbers. That's like the side length of a square. Side lengths would always be positive. So I could rewrite negative 9 as 9 times negative 1. And then we could look at this plus or minus the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. So that would be 3 times the square root of negative 1, you have your plus or minus, and now we've been introduced to i, so that could be plus or minus 3i, and then I could represent that on the number line there and there. And we could do the same thing here, we could say 5 times negative 1, we could look at plus or minus the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1, and then we could go square root of 5 is irrational, and the square root of negative 1 could be i. So then we could represent that. It should be a little bit above 2, not to 3, and then a little below t, not quite to 3, and that could be those two numbers. So that is as far as they'll go in Algebra 1. Uh, this lesson has some complex numbers, but you don't need to do that because this would be as far as we go in Algebra 1, just representing i as a solution to the equation x squared equals negative 1.